Stay tuned for the latest message from Pastor Kevin Anthony. We know the story of story of David and Goliath. We have heard it from childhood. Whether in the church or whether in Sunday school, we have heard it an umpteen number of times. But we are going to break it down. How many of you all? How many of you all eat a bread, slice of bread? Anybody enjoy slice of bread here? Yeah? Bread, bread. How many of you all take the whole slice and shove it in your mouth? Please. You love it. You take the whole bread, full them. How many? Of, no, you break it. That's what we're going to do. We're going to break bread and see what God has got in store for us. I want you to break down the first point. What causes momentum? I want you to pay attention to this. What causes momentum? What gives the momentum in our favor? What turns the momentum in our favor? Look at what he says. And he took his staff in his hand and chose. Does it say chose in your Bible? Come on church, are you tracking with me? He says he chose. What did he choose? Five smooth stones. Does it say smooth stones in your Bible? Okay. And he says out of the brook. And then he says what? And he put them in a shepherd bag. He put them in a shepherd's bag. He didn't have a sack bag. He had a shepherd's bag. And he did what? Which he had. Even in a scribe. Scribe is wallet. Scribe means purse. How many of you use rocks? Big rocks. Rock, rock, big rock for that. No, you will look for pebbles and smooth ones. Why? If you use a rough one, how many of you guys have got hit on your own finger? Yeah? You have been hurt. By the time you hit, what do you, you, the, instead of the stone hitting, it hits your own hand here. And then you want to do what? It, you, you know what, this, what happens later. That means you look for pebbles, you look for stones that are smooth, round, that there is no, when you hit it, when you release it, it goes straight. It has a smooth flow. Now look at this young man. Listen, look at what he says. He chose five smooth stones. Do you think they were big or small? How can you say it was small? What makes you say small? So confidently you're saying small. You're there that time next to him. How can you say so small? How can you say confidently that he, he picked up small? He called, come, came and told you in the morning, in the night, the revelation he gave you personally. Yeah, I took small. No, no, no. How can you say that you pick up small? Huh? He need the speed. But I want to know, how do you know it was small? Uh, he didn't carry his suitcase. <laughs> he did not carry. He took that small little bag. And the Bible says, in that bag there was what? Puss. Please, I want to see that person when you carry rocks, man. You don't put rocks in the purse. You put small things. That man took time and sat down and took small. And the Bible says he took time to choose it. He prepared himself, not randomly, whatever comes more in my way. Ini mina mina mo. Oh, da 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 da. Come on, in Jesus' name. No, no, no. He took time. He sat down and he took the time to go down to the brook. Listen. If you want God to move in your favor and carry momentum, start preparing. And how do you prepare? Choose. That means your eyes are open, your mind is awake, and you choose and select. By the way, you say it's a small stone, right? It all starts with very small. Listen, if it is a small idea, work with it. Don't think when I have a big idea, when I have a big platform, and then... Go Hold a minute. He didn't want a big platform. Many people think when I go to a big service, when a big conference, big table, big man of God, big, 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 then things will move. When I have a big job, when I have a big salary, when I have a big boss, when I have a big company. Listen, he had small stones. Look at somebody, he says small stones. And how many did you pick up by the way? And how many did you use by the way? It could be just like one little idea. It could just be that one little preparation that what God needs to start a momentum. One small thing, even if it is insignificant. Hey, by the way, where was he going? Please tell me. To scare of the birds? Come on. He had no work in life, so tell us. Let's play. No, where was he, by the way? Which setting was he? Please talk to me. Where was he? Huh? I can't hear you. He was in the war. 
right in the midst of the battleground, right in the midst of the field, and he's facing Goliath. He's there, right there. He's not gone for time pass. He's not gone for uh, uh, what do you call leisure or relaxation. Let me stress it out. No, he was not going for stress relief. He was in the midst of the battle. And in the midst of the battle, how does one go for war? With stones? Please think for a minute. How does one go? How does one go for a battle? He's right in the middle. And there, he's right in the middle. And he's t- taking stones and putting in his bag. And he's going with his catty. Or he's going with his sling. Or he's gone for the... What do you think would have gone through the minds of the army? Think for a minute. What would have crossed your mind? Is David serious? Are you serious? Not. He's gone lost it. He's supposed to take a sword. He's taking a stone. He said, this guy, is he joking or what? Seriously? Going to Goliath, stone? Listen, many people will question your small little preparation. You don't be bothered about it. What is in your hand? What you have, whether little or much, doesn't matter. Handle it best. You have a small income, handle it best. You have a small little workplace that you work and insect handle it best. Come on, am I making some sense, church? You have a small little room that is there. Listen, make sure your housekeeping is top notch because then you move to a bigger house. Oh, come on, guys. Listen, why if you do not know how to handle a 10 by 10 room, what in the world will tell you that God will give you a three bedroom apartment when you can't handle a 10 by 10? Come on, guys, please talk to me. I don't know why did I say this, but... Receive it, whoever the Lord is speaking to. If you do not know how to handle a 10 by 10 room and you do not know how to keep it well and you're saying, God, I want a bungalow. He's turning and I say, can you manage a 10 by 10 first? It does not matter. That small little thing, prepare and prepare well. Forget about what people have to say. Seriously? Yeah, seriously. Instead of taking the sword, he's taking the stone. They thought, oh, finish this all over. Go to verse number 38. Go to verse number 38. I'm going to do a lot of back and forth, back and forth to see what there are hidden treasures in this place. Verse 38. What does it say? And Saul armed David with his armor and he put a helmet of bronze upon his head and also he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword with his armor. And he attempted to go. And what happened? For he attempted to go. For he had not tested it. And David said unto Saul. What did he say? I cannot go with these. For I have not tested them. And David did what? Put them off. By the way. What was the size of Saul? He was a tall fellow. He was a built, very wilt, broad. He took his big helmet and put it on this teenage boy. Have you, ever rid- have you ever had the pleasure of riding a bike with a helmet two sizes bigger than yours? But if you've ridden and taken the helmet, you wouldn't want to drive a bike that time with a head with that, with a thing head like that. Like you don't know because you don't know looking at By the time you look at the helmet is the other side. <laughs> Listen, that was a state. I'm making you laugh because I want you to remember. Because this big guy thought I will equip this small guy with my helmet. I will take what is on my head and put it on this guy's head. Hold a minute. You cannot take somebody else's thinking. You cannot take somebody else's size and put it on your head. I will try it. He said, I will, he said, my Bible says what? He didn't put the size of David's armor. He put Saul's size on him. Oh, one size does not fit everybody, my friend. You cannot take somebody else's idea. You cannot take somebody else's formula. You cannot take somebody else's what has worked for him and say, oh, it is going to work for me. No, you need to know what you have in your hand. What you are good at. Come on, guys. You should know what is in your hand. No matter how small it is. Small. Listen, I'm going to push this word small. Because most of the time, our focus is big. When it becomes big, when it becomes big, when it becomes big, when it gets bigger and bigger, greater, fatter, all that stuff. Then things will... No, no. God just needs small things. Listen, God has always used something that is very insignificant. Five loaves and two fish. Oh my God, just one times child, child meal. And God multiplied. Little, small, small, very small. Very insignificant. 
And that's what was happening here. But the Bible says what? The Bible says he took off. He said he attempted to go. Listen, that's what happens. We try to take somebody else's thing and we want to go and we fail. But thank God, it did not matter at that point in time who was telling him to wear his armor. He just said what? Sorry, I have to put it off. Listen, don't get into the business of emulating someone else. When I say emulating means, oh, it worked for that guy, it worked for that family, it worked for that brother, it worked for that sister, let me take it. No, no, that was his size. You go for your size. You go what you are trained for. What is the skill in your hand? What is the gifting on your life? What is the idea that God has equipped you with? One more thing I like that. Verse 40. I missed that. Thank you, Lord. Where was the sling? Come on, guy. Where was the sling, by the way? Hanging around him? No, no, no. It was not hanging around his neck or in his pocket. It was in his hand. Can someone tell me, what's the New Testament sling today? What is the New Testament sling? That was his sling at that, that point in time. In New Testament also, there is a sling. And it, what is it called? It's called sword of the spirit. Where is the sword? In the case or in the hand? I promise you I will teach you the strategy that God uses about having his word or the sword in his hand. Because the enemy has known the strategy of God and today he is using the same strategy against the church. Because when she has you knock off the word of God or the sword of God in your hand, if he is able to knock that thing out of your hand, listen, he already had you. You may have, Come on, show me if somebody going with the helmet of salvation to fight. I fight you. No, no, no. You need the sword. That is for your defense. But the word of God is for your offense. Come on, guys. Am I making sense? That's what the enemy wants to knock off our hand that we may drop the word. You will drop the promises. You will lose grip of it because he wants to, he wants to shrug you off. He wants to hit your hand that you will drop it because he knows the moment you hit this, the other thing will take care of it. He knows how to overtake it. I'll teach you one day. I'll teach you very soon on that one. Make sure you make sure that you have, when you're going for a battle, yes, the stones may be there inside, but make sure the sling is in your hand. Hallelujah. Listen, when you know to prepare well, see, what does the Englishman say? Practice makes man perfect. Yes or no, my friend? Did you all go to school or not? In the school they taught us, practice makes man perfect. Listen, this guy practiced so well in the field. He practiced it so well. Then when he saw Goliath, he says, this guy, I cannot miss this guy. He's too big. I cannot miss the target. He's too big. He's too good to be missed. Because what? See, when he practiced well, there is no wastage. When you practice well, when you prepare well, he took five, by the way. But he used only one. Why? He prepared well. He did not prepare at the brook, by the way. He prepared well before that. He practiced it in his time when nobody was watching him. He was practicing when his father was not saying, encouraging him. No, he was all by himself. He was practicing the sling every single day. So when the time came, he did not fail. He had the sling in his hand. I want to ask the same question. What's in your hand tonight? What's in the pocket that you have? What is it had in the storehouse? Then when you come, you're ready with it. See, when you prepare well, there is no wastage, I said. Hallelujah. David had that one shot, and that one shot was more than enough. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. What's the second thing that gives momentum? Go to the same chapter. Go to the same chapter. Look at what the Bible says. Verse 25. Look at the same chapter, verse 25. Oh, I forgot this statement. You got to listen to this. Okay, please read, keep 25. Listen, preparation creates confidence. And confidence, pro, pro, and, and confidence produces momentum. I'll say it one more time. Preparation creates confidence. 
and confidence produces momentum. You and I can be sitting here from now till 31 of December and say, Lord, momentum, 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 momentum. You might even write a song on that, momentum, momentum. It is not going to work unless you prepare. Because, pro- come on guys, has anybody done, pre- has anybody done a, uh, in, your, in, your, in, your, in your workplaces, has anybody done any kind of a presentation in your company? Where you have to speak or you have to present your budget or present something. It could not be in a setting of 100 people, maybe two people in front of you. Have you ever prepared, have you ever had the opportunity to present yourself? Have you ever come to a place, that kind of a setting where you do not prepare when you put on the spot? How did you, how did you do it? Oh, come on guys, please. You would have been praying, Lord, let the earth open, I want to be buried straight inside. But have you looked at the other side? When you have prepared well, it does not matter the MD is sitting there. You are confident. But that gives you the, come on guys, that gives you the momentum. Because you have prepared well, you have studied well, you know what has to be spoken. You know exactly how to carry yourself, because why? You have prepared well. Have you gone to a situation where you are not prepared, you have a lot of sweat on your hand? Yeah? Half of the time you will be, you will be, you will be, you will chewing, you will be chewing on your lips. You'll be fiddling with your thumb underneath and let this time go fast, let this time go fast. Why? Because preparation is la- you, you fall short of preparation. Lack of preparation. But when you prepare well, when you practice well, you're confident on that day because I can go through because that's what gives momentum. Go to verse 25. He says what? And the men of Israel said unto David, they told him, he said, have you seen this man that has come up? Have you seen this guy who's come up to challenge us? Have you seen him? He says, surely he's come to do what? To defy Israel. He's come up. And it shall be that the man who kills him, the king will do what? Enrich him. See what it says. The king will do what? Enrich him with what? Great riches. Is that what the Bible says in your Yeah? The book that you have, the Bible that you have, is that what it says there? He said the king will enrich you with great riches. And then he says what? He will give him his daughter. In marriage. And next means he'll make his father's house free in Israel. What is the first one? He'll make him very rich with great riches. Next one. He's going to give the daughter. In other words, you're going to be the son-in-law to the king. And the last one. Huh? Father's house will go tax-free. No more tax. In other words, he said, I will make you rich. That's one side of the story. The next other side of the story is what? He's not going to take the money back in tax. He says, tax is given. Come on, guys. I'm not only going to make you rich, but I'm going to cover the expenses also. I'm going to exempt the expense. I'm going to exempt you from taxes. Not you, but your father. Now, what do you think that is there hidden in this scripture that will cause momentum? What do you think that is hidden? He says what they told him, that he who kills this man Goliath, the king will make him rich and with great riches. The king is going to make him his son-in-law. The king is going to let his father and his household go tax-free. What do you see that David saw and that started a momentum in his life? Opportunity, okay. Huh? Reward? Reward? What else did he see? Come on guys. What did he see here? His eyes brightened. Ah! Cannot miss this opportunity here. Cannot miss this reward. Listen. I see goal. His goal was. I have to get that riches. I need to get to be the, 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 the son-in-law of the king. I need to make sure not only me. My family goes free. He had a vision. What causes momentum is vision. What causes momentum is dream. Come on guys. Do you have goals in your offices? No? I'm not talking about the goal post. The football goals post. No, I'm talking about, <laughs> no, I'm, not talking about I'm talking about real goals that they give you at the beginning of the year. Targets are given. Yes or no? What drives the company is the target. Listen, the Bible says about Jesus, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame. Even Jesus was looking for a reward. There's a difference between award and reward. They're not the same. There's a fine line between both of them, but they mean differently. Listen, Jesus carried a cross because he was looking at the reward. Jesus 
allowed them to stripe him because he's looking for a reward. Are you with me? Jesus allowed them to nail him on the crowd on the cross because he was looking for a reward. That's what the Bible says what? Who for the joy? Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. Don't open it. Hebrews 12 2. He says who for the joy that was set before him. He endured the cross. Despising the shame. That for him joy was a reward. For him the reward was you and me. Come on guys. The reward when Jesus carried a cross he was looking at you. He was thinking of you. When Jesus was there on the cross, when Jesus was there on the cross, when he was there on the cross, when he faced rejection, when he faced accusation, when he was sold, he listen, at that point in time, he didn't defend himself. He said, let it go because I'm waiting for my reward. And who's the reward? You and I. Listen, award is different and reward is different. You know what was the award that Jesus got? Today he's seated at the right hand of the Father. You know what is the award that he got? At the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. That is his award. His recognition. But what was his reward? You and I. Are you with me, church? Listen, I see in this guy, I see David here. He had a reward in front of him. Forget the title. He wanted the reward. He didn't want an award. Oh, award certificate that he will frame it. Oh, he defeated Goliath, man champion. No, no, no. He wanted riches. Come on, guys. He wanted riches. He wanted to get to the palace. He wanted to be. Listen, the Bible says what? He's going to be the daughter of the, he was going to be the son-in-law. He's going to be the daughter's husband, right? That means he straight walks into the palace. In the palace means place of authority. Come on, guys. Am I making some sense? And the next part, he says what? Not only, but his father's house. Tax exempted for life. How do you like that? See, not was he made rich himself, but the people who are associated with him, everybody goes free. See the effect of having vision. See the effect of having a life that he says, God, I want a reward. Look at the life when you are someone who is goal oriented, someone who is reward oriented, who is looking for that and say, because of that, because of the vision, because of the dream that you have, someone else also goes free. How many of you think or how many of you know? And even if you don't, I'll tell you to tonight. The enemy wants you to be broke. The enemy wants you to be busted. And the enemy wants you to be begging. I'll say it one more time. The enemy wants you to be broke. He wants you to be busted. And he wants you to reduce to a place called begging. But let me tell you the other thing what God wants. Look at what the Bible says. He made him rich. Second, you're going to be my son-in-law. Third, I'm going to make you so rich that it's going to begin to affect other people around you. The riches will not be just limited to you, but you begin to enjoy with the other people around you. Look at what God wants. He doesn't just want you to be blessed. First of all, God wants you to be blessed. If the enemy wants you to be broke, then God wants you to be blessed. If the enemy wants you to be busted, then God wants you to boom. If the enemy wants you to be begging, then God wants you to be burgeoning. What is this burgeoning? By a big word pastor has come up with. Hold him and I'll tell you. I'll break it up. See, blessed everybody understands. Blessed everybody understands. But that's the starting point. That's just the beginning. Well, maybe of us may understand what does it mean a boom. Oh, there's a boom in the market. There's a harvest happening, a bumper crop. Oh, things are just moving. Things are beginning to move in the market. Things are happening. It's not normal. It's going to the next level. Listen, God doesn't want us to be at the level that is booming. He wants us to be the place of burgeoning. B-U-R-G-E-O-N-I-N-G. You know what does that mean? Hold a minute. Rapid growth. He doesn't want us to be blessed. He doesn't want to have boom, but also grow faster. Come on, guys. I spoke to you on the first. Get your path first. Get your promise first. Yeah? Find your path. Find what God has got for you. And then do what? Walk or get onto the path. And then build velocity. 
then build speed. Is that what I told you? You get your promise first. Once you've got your promise, don't hold and sit on it. No, take the hole and start walking in it. When you start walking in it, build your speed. Listen, when you get the word, you are blessed. When you get onto the path, you'll start booming. But don't remain there. Build velocity. Because God wants you to build rapid speed. Oh, you'll say, Pastor, what are you speaking? Is it in the word of God? Yes, it's in the word of God. Isaac, in the time of the famine, God told him, don't go to Egypt. Stay here where you are. And the Bible says, same year, Isaac sold. Correct? Isaac sold, right? The Bible says, same year, he reaped a hundredfold. Hundred times. He became rich. He became great. Till he became very great. That's the Old Testament you'll tell me. Pastor, that is Old Testament. Uh, hold on a minute. I'll tell you the New Testament also. The Bible says, I'm the wine, you're the branches. He says, a wine that bears fruit. Fruit is fruitfulness. Fruit is what? You're blessed. Then he says, when you begin to bear more fruit, you begin to boom. But the last one, he says, when you begin to bear much fruit, much, it is fruit, more fruit, much fruit. That means you're in the place of burgeoning. You're rapidly growing. And the Bible says, God is glorified when we bear much fruit. Come on, guys. Go home and read John chapter 15 very well. He says, when you and I bear much fruit, God is glorified in that place. Hallelujah. Are you with me, church? You're going to pray, God, even as a partake of the communion table. If the momentum has been on the side of the enemy and he wants you to be broke, he wants you to be busted and he wants to be begging. You're going to say, God, even as a partake of the communion table, I want you to reverse it for me. I don't want to be at the level of being blessed. If I ask you, I, you know, these days it's, a, it's, it's, like a, it's like a Christian, yeah, how are you doing? How, how is it going, brother? I'm blessed. Hold a minute. That's become just another statement. When was the last time that you told that person, I'm booming, man? Listen, that's not for decoration. That's for experience. Don't say, oh, I'm blessed. No, no. Say, God, I want to go to the next level. I want to boom. I want to be booming, buzzing. Listen, when is the last time that you said, or you use that word, I'm burgeoning, I'm rapidly growing. Hallelujah. Listen, God knows how to give you God speed. God knows how to give you good speed. In Jesus' name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Listen, have a vision. Look at somebody, have a vision for your life. Listen, vision, vision, vision is what drives momentum. Come on, are you with me, church? The Bible says, where there is no vision, people perish. See, you may be doing life every single day and you think you're moving, but if there is no vision, you have nothing to hold on to something because you're moving, but you're not holding anything definite. You're just moving. You're just moving. Year on year, year comes, year goes. Year comes, year goes. Month comes, month goes. Month comes, month goes. Month comes, month goes. But there is nothing that you're holding on. There is nothing concrete happening because there's no strategy. Where there is no vision, there is no strategy. You look at these sports people. You look at these sports people. The athletes, when they want to compete, they don't get endurance and stamina one day. In the first day. They do it over months and months and months and months. And that's the time they build their endurance. They build their strength. They build their stamina and they're ready for it. Are you with me, church? Have you seen these people who do bodybuilding? Huh? You see, when they lift weights, when they lift weights, it doesn't happen overnight. Today, they start up maybe with 2 kgs. Maybe after one month, they may try to do what? 5 kgs. But it is what? It, as they go, as they grow, as they go, as they grow, what happens? That's the time they begin to do what? Build their strength. They begin to mull their muscles. Hallelujah. Listen, when you ask the same people, when they started off, when they started with 2 kg, after 10 days, if you ask them, are you lifting up 2 kg? Is it uh, giving you ache and pain? No, he said, well, nothing. I'll just do it with one finger now. But after 10 days, if you ask them, can you do 20 kg? And ask them the next day, how you feel? Oh, man, it's aching. Oh, see, when it is aching, that means you're doing right. Have you done push-ups? Your core muscle? Abs? All the six-pack, 12-pack? How was it when you did the first day? It was easy. What happened after 24 hours? Nobody wants to touch. Please don't touch me. Don't make me laugh. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't. 
Why? It's aching. Why? You worked it out. You worked your muscle out. Because, you know, these days, I'm, we're going through rigorous training at our, at our own, in our own house. I do it with my son. I'm really making him, I'm making him sweat it out. When he's going through, the, when he's warmed up, he feels nice. But next day, dad, this, of course he's supposed to ache. I'm not, I did not make that exercise. I did not put you to a rigorous state to give you a massage. Many times you want to go through it and say, God, can you massage me? No, God said, I'm not giving you a massage. I want to give you an ache. See, when you have an ache, when you have a pain, when you have a pain, that means the worst muscle is being worked out. See, when you go through exercise and you do not have a pain next day, something was wrong, something was missing. Something was missing last day, one day before. Because if you're going through pain and you're going through aches and you're going through all the things, that means something worked one day before. Listen, when you go through pressures of life and you feel pain, listen, don't cry, Lord, this is paining, that is paining, this ache, that ache, heartache, this ache. Oh, no, rejoice, something is working in your favor. <laughs> listen, if you go through the pain, then you're on the right path. Amen. Are you with me, church? Momentum is in your hand. Amen. Listen, if you, the secret of any kind of, listen, this guy will tell you, he's, he's doing bodybuilding. If you see a guy, if it aches the next day and he gives up, the momentum is lost. You got to push it more next day. You got to go back the next day. You got to go back the next day. The pain will give up. But if you say, God, I don't want to be broke anymore. I don't want to be busted anymore. I don't want to be begging anymore. Listen, this year you're going to say, God, listen, what did I say? Hopeless, right? The, word, the prayer started with hopeless, hopeless, hopeless. Listen, the hopeless for this year is saying, go to pray, God, I want to go debt free completely. Amen. Oh, and pastor said this year, no, no more debts this year. Oh, I felt nice. I had goosebumps. Listen, I don't want you to have goosebumps. I don't want you to have shocks. I want you to be charged, not shocked. You don't shock your mobile. You charge your mobile. Come on, guys. So don't tell me, oh, that part of the message when pastor said this year, you're going to go shock free. Uh, shock free, I'm saying. You're going to be, you're going to go debt free. You're going to be released from that. Don't say, oh, I felt goosebumps. No, I could. Forget about it. I'm not interested in a goosebumps. You tell me, pastor, I felt charge at that point in time. That's why. Because charge will hold you. Sustain you. Not shock. Shock can be fatal. Are you with me? The third thing. What did I say? When you find a path, get onto your path. And build velocity, build speed, build speed, build speed. I'll give you a new tagline for you today. That should change your life. That should change your thinking. You want our minds to be changed? Go down. Go down, 17. Go down to 48. Go down to 48. Go down to 48. Go down to 48. See what the Bible says. And it came to pass... When the Philistine rose. Come on, are you with me, church? When the Philistine rose and he came and drew near to meet David. What happened? David hastened. What the Bible says? David hastened. He hurried up. He didn't waste time. He didn't chicken out. He did not run the other way. No, what the Bible says what? And David hastened and ran toward the army. He did not run the other way. He didn't run the side way. He didn't take the closest exit and run away. Exit and run away. No, the Bible says when, the, when Goliath charged him, he came close to him. David, the Bible says, he ran towards him. I see response giving momentum to David. Preparation gives you momentum. Vision and goal gives you momentum. Response also gives you momentum. And how did he respond? You come here, I will see you. No, no, I'll wait for you. Come, 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 come. No, no, no. He didn't wait for the Goliath to come towards him. The Bible says he ran towards David. When he saw pressure building, when he saw the enemy coming, closing in, when he saw the power of that enemy coming, closing in, listen, Bible says, this guy was about 10 feet plus. Anybody is here who's 6 feet in this church right now? Nobody is 6 feet. No, I don't think Sam is 6 feet. You're 6 feet, son? Huh? Sam is 6 feet. Take 4 more parts of him and put it up there. He'll be 10 feet. Listen, listen, 
it's like andra standing in front of the, the in front of uh, over 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 the how would andra look at him that's how goliath was looking at david oh this i can just crush him i can just walk over him because he was double the size not just height wise but built wise in every angle he said i'm going to just smash this guy i'm just going to smash his head i'm just going to walk over this guy what would have david seen god my gosh i cannot believe the size of this guy i made a wrong choice he did not run the bible says he didn't run the other direction but he said this is my opportunity now is my time listen so like can you open up psalms 119 Psalms 119 verse number 60 I will tell you listen when you have the opportunity don't chicken out don't look at the size of the enemy don't focus on the size of the one who's coming as a pressure in front of your face look at the size who's backing you up look at the one who's backing you behind look at the size and move forward see what is it Psalms 119 verse number 60 is anybody there on Psalms 119 verse number 60 he said I made haste Psalms 119 verse number 60 he said i made haste i did not delay he said i made haste and i delayed not to keep your word Amen. see when the word of god say comes now don't say i will think about it i will fast about it i will counsel it i will take it to this one i will call that one i will no 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 listen when the word of god comes and it causes a sense of urgency then respond urgently Amen. are you with me church see response and the timing of that response is equally important you can respond after 6 months the time is already gone it's of no use so if you're responding and the lord is prompting to respond response now then it has to be now so be so so it be now what the bible says he did not go slowly walking strolling no the bible says he ran he was aggressive what gave the momentum see he was doing with a sling he was running what was he doing he was doing what he was building momentum we was building momentum come come close come close come close listen david was aggressive when you see the pressures in life get more aggressive in pursuing your dreams come on guys when you feel the pressure that's the time to be more aggressive when you feel the enemy is going to be on your face like this and i'm going to smash it down that's the time to be aggressive not chickening out he's trying to attack your family then he said i'm going to get more aggressive in my prayer i start with 15 minutes i'm going to you look at my face you look at me and say i'm going to pray one more hour you got to be aggressive with your dream you got to be aggressive with your dream what is in your hand what you're pursuing listen he may come with all kinds of intimidation and to do what weigh you down listen that's the time not to run here and there that's the time to be aggressive see what he says the bible says he ran towards and often time we look at ourselves why the momentum does not fall in our favor when it is time for us to respond we are saying we'll do it another time Oh, when the time is convenient when i am ready when i am this when i am that when i have this when i have that no he didn't wait he said this is my opportunity see every opportunity has a life span are you with me and he could not wait another day he became very aggressive he seized the opportunity now is the time come 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 quickly he did not wait for him he ran towards him listen you see the pressures in life when you see the intimidation of the enemy and you feel bogged down and you feel weighed down and you feel that you it's against your family against your marriage against your work against whatever thing and you feel it listen be aggressive in your dreams Amen. come on guys have you seen those bodybuilders when they're in the gym they are doing all kinds of you saw the faces have you seen those guys bulging on that table ah, 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 what are you doing they are aggressive listen be aggressive with your dreams don't be aggressive with your wife <laughs> come on you heard what i said don't be aggressive with your husband don't be aggressive with people listen don't tell me tomorrow pastor said be aggressive oh pastor is preaching lord pastor gave, gave me that word be aggressive don't be aggressive listen don't be aggressive in the flesh are you with me church because the bible says the kingdom of god suffereth violence and the violent take it by force now that violence is not physical violence flesh violence is in the sp-
spirit. It's in your faith. You feel the pressures in life. Then listen. You don't sleep in that moment. You get aggressive. Let's rise and pray. Prepare well. Look at somebody. Prepare well. Bless somebody and say prepare very well. Come on guys. Listen. Do you want me to pray for your job that God would really make, make you sick of your job that you'll boost for the, like, go to the next level? <laughs> oh my God. I like the son of mine. He's so honest. He said yes, yes, yes. Listen. It's a very dangerous prayer. It's a very dangerous prayer. You'll become so sick to the core. Don't wait to get so sick, then you go to the doctor crawling. While the remedy is there, while right now, time is there to prepare, prepare yourself well. Come on, guys. Are you ready to pray this prayer? Lord, I will prepare well. I will, as I partake of the communion table. Pray. I want a vision. Listen, take time. Listen, if you don't have a vision for your life, before the service you came, you didn't have a vision for life, it's okay. But now, this is your moment. I say, let's engage with God. I say, God, I want a vision for my life. I want to get my promise and get onto it later. Find your promise, what God has promised for you. And then you do what? You slowly build momentum. Come on, guys. You see the guys who run short distance, 100 meters from the first day itself, they don't run it out. <gasps> They'll be huffing and puffing, finish, it's all over. No, they build it over a period of time. Then they build momentum. You're going to partake of the communion table. Say, God, Everything about me, I don't want just to be remaining at the level of being blessed. Lord, I want to experience boom. Anybody has experienced boom and if it is not you, then you want to say, God, I want to experience what boom means. Pray that your, your family would be booming. How the Bible, how the economy of the country booms. Everybody talks, oh, that country is booming. That country is flourishing. Oh, that country is going to another place. Take it down to the family level. Take it down to the individual level and say, oh, this guy is booming, man. Oh, this guy is flourishing. Say, God, I don't want to remain at the level of flourishing. I want to be burgeoning. Rapidly growing for your glory. Jesus said, I've come to give you life. That is being blessed. But that did not end there. He said, I've come to give you life and life in abundance. Abundance is burgeoning for somebody else. That is for somebody else. Your momentum is not just for you to be blessed. Your momentum is also for somebody else to be blessed. Pray God, I want to reach that place. Even as I partake of the communion table tonight. I love you God. I give you praise. I give you praise. Pray, 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 pray. Spend some time. Pray, 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 pray. Pray, pray and ask God for grace. Your preparation would create confidence and your confidence would produce momentum. There will be a tangible, it will be tangible. Momentum in your life will be tangible. It will not be a feel-good message, but it will be an experience. You truly experience the momentum of God in your life. What is that has come to a standstill? What is it that has come to a standstill? What is it that is slowed down in your life and you don't see progress? It is dragging. Bring it before God and say, God, I need momentum here. And the same very God will tell you, can you start preparing son? Can you start preparing my daughter? Take a time. Choose. The Bible says he chose smooth stones. Choose. Sit down and choose. Spend time. Go down the brook. Spend time in the presence of God and choose. And pray and ask God for grace. Even as you partake of the communion table, you will not let go of the sling. The sling will be in your hand. The sling would be in your hand. The sling would be in your hand. I love you, God. I love you, Jesus. I give you praise. I love you, Jesus.